What is going on today, guys? This is Tony from Team Divine Pro here. Here to talk to you guys about, um, well, VG BT15 Infinite Rebirth. Uh, it's kind of like review week maybe three, considering the fact, well, week number three, considering the fact that I've been away for at least two weeks. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to probably divide this up into two parts. Um, first part is going to be whatever has been confirmed or most of it, and then second part is going to continue with whatever I missed and whatever hasn't been confirmed yet that has an ability because most likely some of them don't. Anyways, guys, I do apologize for being away. Exams have been arriving on me like crazy, so I will have to um, so I have to make time for that and all that. But now that exams are over and all that, I have more time. So if you guys want to drop a comment or anything about what you want to see next, I will do that. And by the way, uh, improving your way shorts game. Uh, there will be another episode at some point uh, in the next week or so because somebody asked for a certain thing and I will reply to that. So anyways guys, here we go. Uh, starting off with the first card, probably the most uh, disputed card of the game so far, Star Vader Omega Glendios. So this card, when I saw it in the anime, I was like, okay, uh, you know, it's kind of over. Uh, I'm like, I was like, too late! No, I, I quit! I, I give up! I go, uh, buddy fight, I don't know, what buddy fight, uh, oh yeah, by the way, I'm not going to probably play buddy fight, unless it's like, the legend, legend world that comes out or something like that, but anyways, buddy fight, nope, okay, yeah, a uh, waste, okay, yeah, uh, I don't know, because, uh, Exodia, yeah, Exodia, you give up, what, I don't want to win, what, win condition, what, so anyways, yeah, so that's, I had the same reaction that a lot of people had, so I was kind of like, whoa, this is a little too OP, so anyways, uh, anyways, let's read this card, so it's a limit break five at the beginning of your main phase. If the number of your opponent's locked card is five or more, you win. Yeah, this part right here, this 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 entire thing, unneeded, not needed, not needed. Like the not even like scissors Azel can help you. Like the only card that can really save you is if you unlock in the turn. But like this card. If you read Limit Break 4 after, it's really bad. Oh, by the way, they, re they invented a new thing called Reverse uh, uh, like reverse Rarity, so it's pretty cool. You can see that just by the bottom right there. I don't know how to zoom in, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. So anyways, moving down. Um, one second. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, anyways, uh, Limit Break 4 ability, Counter Blast 1, and choose one card with... Verse in its card name from your hand and discard it. All your opponent's locked cards cannot be unlocked during your opponent's next end phase. This is what makes this possible. And it's pretty cheap. Because then if you if anybody's played against Link Joker or who is going to, you'll know that if you get a front row locked and a booster locked in the opposite columns, you're pretty much dead. Because you can't boost in high enough level so your opponent's easy to like they can block really easily. And then uh, other ability, when a unit with a reverse in its card name is placed on your rearguard circle, choose one of your opponent's rearguards and lock it. This ability cannot be used for the rest of that turn. And then continuous all of your rearguards with reverse in its card name are also Link Joker, and during your turn this unit gets plus. So the fact that not only do they become Link Joker, it's also the fact that they get power boost, and also because uh, you, can, you get to lock on call makes this card really broken because... In all reality, the only cost that you're paying at all for this card is to keep your thing locked. Is key to keep your uh, opponent's card locked, which is not at all a high price to pay, considering the fact that everything else is pretty much free and that you can play reverse units and they'd still be considered Link Joker. So you could play the best reverse cards and it would not matter a thing. The only issue would be that if they land in your damage zone, it's going to be a hindrance because you need Link Joker as um, in the damage to do special counter blast, which is I guess the way that Konami thought that they make this card a little bit more fair, but I think that the big, the best thing that the people could probably do would just be to use like Infinite Zero and like Chaos Breaker. I don't think that using Reverse, like maybe at most you play three, but I don't think you play more than that because then at that point you risk having way too many of the damage. But anyways, that's my Take on it, and we're going to move on to the second one that's been confirmed. Sliver Thorn, Dragon Empress, Venus Laqueer. A grade of 3, 11k, Pale Moon. Um, let's go with the ability, Limit Break 4. This ability is active. Counter Blast, two cards with Silver Thorn in its card name. Soul Charge 2, choose up to 5 Pale Moon from your soul, whose total grades are 6 or less, and call them to separate rearguard circles. This ability cannot be used for the rest of that turn. So, 
Um, first thing I've been noticing a lot of these these abilities, this ability can be used for the rest of the turn. I guess that they're trying to prevent people from going crazy with the abilities. But anyways, this card's actually pretty balanced in my opinion. It's a lot better than the other Silver Thor Thorn Great Threads because of the fact, uh, at least like the original, not the reverse unit, because of the fact that you get to um, Soul Charge to keep your balance, and then you also get to um, call a certain amounts. So you could call Great Threes, and they'd still... Um, you can call two grade threes if you want, if you only need them, or you can just call like whatever you need, and it's more precise. Whereas the other one, you had to if you soul charge to grade zeros and all that, you'd be forced to call them out. So I find this a lot better as more, more like a specific card spit choosings and all that. And and then you can also do if your card names, it's a uh, Laqueer, Cross Break Cross Ride, yeah Cross Ride. So anyways, it's a pretty good card. Uh, Still not the biggest fan of Pale Moons, but anyways, the card the card art looks pretty sick. Like there's two dragons behind it, pretty awesome. Now moving on, we have Blackwing Swordbreaker. So all you Shadow Paladin people out there, like me included, you guys are probably like, whoa, it's not Revenger. Yeah, they're bringing back things like this. Yeah, you know. So keep your cards around, you know. So it's a uh, what is it? Power 6K Shadow Paladin Grade One. So what it does is that is Soul Boss one plate when this unit is placed on. Rearguard Circle from your deck, if you have a Shadow, Shadow Paladin Vanguard, you may pay the cost if you do draw a card. So that's actually pretty good, because you can use Maka or uh, Tartu if you want. I think Tartu can get it, but I wouldn't see why you'd want to put it in the deck, because that would make mess up the ratio of Revengers and all that. So anyways, um, yeah, it's like a Din Drain, if you may, and it's pretty good for Maka or any Searcher that you could get. And any apart from that, I don't... Or call there any being other any searchers, but I haven't looked at any of these cards in the set yet, apart from like maybe the first three so far, or like a few of them. So you guys will be in for much as a surprise as I am if we do see one. So anyways, moving on. Oh yeah, the car this card's pretty good actually. It's not terrible. I I might run it because Shadow Paladin needs draw power. Anyways, uh, now Liberator Star Rain Trumpeter, 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 whatever. So 9k grade 2, I don't get what the point is, Bushiroad's like really obsessed with this card, I don't know why. Trumpeteer is in like literally everything and they just keep on putting its grade up by 1 or at least keeping it at grade 2, it's just really weird. I feel like they should change Trumpeteer to something. I feel like they felt bad for putting it as a starting grade 0, which is why. So anyways, uh, choose a card name, Blaster Blade Liberator from your soul and, or drop zone and put that top at the top of your deck. When this unit is placed on your so you can go pile in Vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do shuffle your deck, look at the top card of your deck, search for up to one gold pile and call it to an open rearguard circle and put the rest of the top rest on the bottom of your deck. See, I don't get the point of why you would put Blaster Blade on the top because of the fact that you're gonna just end up shuffling your deck again afterwards. I guess it's just a way to make sure Well, I guess it's just how they make sure that you actually put it on top and then shuffle it. I don't really I don't really know, but anyways, the shuffled, and then look at the top card of your deck, and then the calling ability is all right, but it's pretty much is the same thing as the other uh, star, like star call trumpeter. Yeah, star call trumpeter, I think for like magic stealer blaster and all that. It's pretty much the exact same thing, and it's just one more K power boost, which is it does make a difference, but I don't see this card being really amazing in gold paladin because then you have more reliance on having that Blaster Blade Liberator in either Soul or Drop Zone, which means that you probably have to run all four. And if you get some of the damage and you haven't rich heat, like gotten those Blaster Blades retired, this card has no relevance because of the fact that your opponent can easily... They might know that you're running this card, or they might know that you're running a heavy Blaster Blade Liberator variant, so they'll just not attack it and make sure that by the only way for you to intercept it would be to intercept with two units or at least put down a 15k shield with intercepting. So it wouldn't be in your best interest to intercept with the Blaster Blade. Now, moving on, uh, Blue Storm Guardian Dragon, Icefall Dragon. I have no clue what this card does, but it looks really cool. Way better than Pashal. It's on. I really wish that this was not for uh, Aqua Force and for some other clan, because I do not play Aqua Force. Actually, it'd be pretty... Actually, uh, I don't know. If they made it red, I'd play. I'd put it in Kagero, maybe. Uh, Sentinel... This is, oh, it's a Quintet Wall. Yeah, Quintet Wall, pretty good. I don't know, play one. A lot of people in Japan, like so far that I've seen, would only play one Quintet Wall to begin with, so I guess you only need one of these anyways. 
in three perfect guards. Um, yeah, so this card, I don't know. If you don't know the rulings, I haven't read the card. But anyways, if you want to, just read them up on this like uh, card fight Vanguard Wikia. So anyway, uh, next card, Unrivaled Blade Rogue Cyclo Cyclo Matuth. I've seen this picture a lot, but I don't know what it does. Dude, limit break four. When I make it, oh, 11k by the way. That one was 6k. That one was 9k. That one was 6k. I think I did that already. Um, this ability is active if you have four. More. When a mega colony arrives with you, choose one of your vanguard. That unit gets plus 10. That, what, 10,000 until the end of turn, okay, so it's a break right, and rest all of your opponent's units, and all of your opponent's units cannot stand during your opponent's next stand phase. And rest all of your opponent's units. During the turn, this, during the turn, if all your opponent's vanguards and rearguards rest, this unit gets plus 2,000 power. Okay, so it's a break ride, but it seems that this card is really broken or something. I might be wrong, but the way I'm reading is that you're resting all your opponent's rear guards, and then they can't stand for the turn that they activate. So it seems pretty broken. Not going to lie. I might want to check the ruling on this. Let's do it. Uh, Okay, so yeah, this card's pretty broken. Yeah, so yeah, this card, pretty broken. Yeah, I think it's a double R or a single R. Yeah, anyways, Mega Colony. Might be good. Look into it. Uh, then there's a Cursed Lancer copy again that's coming out. I don't know why. Okay, now we get down to this thing. I saw this red Rainbow Liberator Balan and then white. Rainbow Liberator Balan, so I'm assuming that they're brothers or something, and they their picture forms. Yeah, they might make a picture. This reminds me of the Blaster Blade Spear and Blaster Dark Spear type of thing. So, anyways, this guy is a grade two, 9k. Um, the Gold Paladin obviously uh, rear guard circle. When a unit named Blaster Blade Liberator is placed on your rear guard circle, if you have Vanguard with Liberator its card name, this unit gets plus 5,000 power till end of turn. Uh, okay, so it's a 14k for one turn. Not too bad. I still think that it applies too much dependent on a uh, bluster blade liberator and where he's placed and everything so i don't know maybe the deck revolves around bluster blade liberator that's cool but i still think that it's not needed in a way because this is going to go back to 9k and then white rainbow liberated bala but I, then again i could see this deck working out pretty fairly so the grade one seven k so i'm assuming that it's when a unit name, yeah, place the rear guard. If you have a Vanguard with a Brilliant's card name, choose one of your cards from your damage on your turn face off. So it's a damage on flipper. This one I can see as possibly viable just because of the fact that it is worth it. It is a 7k that it can boost, but then also you get that additional support that it will give you a um, unflip if you call Bastard Blade Liberator. But it's just like a bonus, whereas this one you can wear. Whereas the main part is the fact that it's 7k and you don't, I don't think you have a lot apart from Marin and Lou. I might be wrong. I haven't played Liberator in forever. So yeah, anyways, that's my take on that. The two brothers are fine. I'd probably run grade one, not grade two. Now moving on, we have Star Vader Magnet Hollow. Uh, grade two, 9k. I, if you look at the anime, I think you see this in the opening credits, but I thought it was a, it would be a grade 3, because it looks pretty big and like, grade 3 wise, you know. So it's probably going to be the last card. Uh, counter Blast 1, then this unit attacks hits a Vanguard. If you have a Vanguard with Star Vader's card name, you pay the cost. If you do search your deck for up to one card with this card name, really to your opponent, put hand and shuffle. This is actually really good. I would probably play this, because it combos well with Omega Gladios. Gladios, yeah. So yeah, um, that probably works out. This guy probably pretty good to play yeah so then you can probably play three of the reverse and then you still be able to get to it so yeah anyways guys this has been part one stay tuned for part two and i will be back with with you guys in a few seconds